It says we're live, so good evening, everyone. Good evening. Thank you for stopping by. I'm Dave Guerra, and this is Let's Have a Chat About Leadership for Thursday, February 6, 2020. Wow, February. I mean, it's hard to believe we're in February, but we're only in February, and that's what my son said last night. It really got me thinking, yeah, we're only in February, and it feels a lot later, but we're also in February, the second month of the year, so something to think about there, folks, something to think about. Well, wishing you a good evening. Hope everything's going well. And uh, tonight in uh, our Lessons in Leadership, because that's what we do on Thursday evenings. We talk about Lessons in Leadership. And today I want to take kind of a little different divergent, uh, divergence. I mean, it's it's kind of outside the norm. But again, it's something that's important and we need to talk about. And that's leaders, all leaders at all levels, everyone. Anxiety, stress, we all have it. Don't say you don't. You're a liar if you don't. You're lying. I'm calling you a liar because we're all human beings. We're all human beings. We're flawed. I'm flawed. You're flawed. We're all flawed. I am flawed because that's who we are. We're human beings. We were born to make mistakes. We were born to be wrong. We were born to learn. If we were born perfect, then we wouldn't need to learn anything. We wouldn't need to. We would come out of the womb already walk womb already walking. We would, but we don't. We've got to learn. We've got to practice. We've got to pick ourselves up and not by our bootstraps or not by our shoelaces. No, that's no, that doesn't. You can't physically pick, pick yourself up by your bootstraps. But as leaders, the one thing we we, we all strive to be is, is the best at what we do. And, and that's fine. And, and be the best and be there for the people that we support. Be there for the people that, well, turn to us. Be there for them, not the other way around. So if you believe the other way around where your leader, uh, the people need the leader more than the leader needs the people. No, you're wrong. It's the other way around. The leader always needs the people more. The people can go move someplace else and find a new leader. They do that all the time. So get that in your head. But the one thing that's not taught in school, sadly, it's not taught in school. It's something we have to learn the hard way. It's how to deal with stress, how to deal with anxiety. And it's not just leaders, but leaders in the making, individuals that are being molded and being shaped. And, and sadly, it sometimes people are not equipped to deal with that. And they're not equipped to deal with that because of age or inexperience or poor leadership, poor mentorship, poor, poor, just just nobody had nobody older than them knew how to deal with it them because they were dealing with themselves their own way, and that would be suppressing it, lashing out. That would be um, hiding it, swallowing it, pointing fingers, blaming others, but never accepting their own fates, their own failures, their own place in life. And because that's ultimately it. Nobody's tied down to anything. At any moment, anybody can change anything. And as we move into this 21st century, we're starting to see that happen more and more. Where people just don't like it, they're going to move on. And that's fantastic. That's the way life should have been. But guess what? It wasn't. And it's still not. But we learn from that. And we learn from other people's mistakes. So just as I hope my kids learn from my mistakes, I hope that future generations will learn from the mistakes of those before them. And sadly, one of the ones that, we, like I said, is not covered in school, is not taught in school, and still technically kind of frowned upon, shamed, uh, and that's stress, that's anxiety. They tell you, oh, suck it up, move on. And you should, you should, but at some point it becomes too much. You should deal with it. You should face it head on. But at some point it just becomes too much. And when you don't deal with that, when you when it gets out of your grasp, that's when you start having problems. And as a leader, you are ineffective. The moment that anxiety, the moment that stress overtakes you, you become worthless to the people that follow you. It's just that simple. You become a shadow of what you once were. But that's why you must always check yourself before you wreck yourself. That's why, as a leader, you have to be the first one to step up and say, you know what? I need help. I need help. Damn the consequences. I need help. Damn the fallout. I need help. And no one will think any less of you. No one will think any anything other than, wow, good move, stepping up, looking for help, getting the help, accepting that help is out there, and realizing that no one is perfect, especially themselves. 
but what can you do about those that don't want to help themselves, that don't want to realize that they're not perfect, that don't want to admit that they need help, that don't want to admit that they're flawed? You know, you don't need to worry about them. You have your own issues. You have to keep moving forward. So <clears throat> I just want to share some stuff with you. Something I found is from the Anxiety and Depression Association of America. It's an actual thing. Anxiety and Depression Association of America website. They have these 14 coping strategies, and they're, they're pretty cool. So we're going to go through them, and I'm just going to talk about them. Oops, where are we? Did I go too far? Yes, I did. <laughs> Talk about stress. All right, let's try this. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> there they are, the coping strategies. Oh, I see what I did. Okay, well, number one, take time out. <clears throat> Practice yoga, listen to music, meditate, get a massage, or learn relaxation techniques. Folks, everybody's got one of these. Learn relaxation techniques. You can play some music. You got your headphones. Stepping back from the problems that are giving you the stress, giving you the anxiety, it helps clear your head, so step step back from those, most certainly. Eat well-balanced meals. Don't skip any meals. Don't skip any meals. Oh, well, my weight this or my weight that. No, you can eat well-balanced meal and you can lose weight. It's I've seen it happen. It's happening right now to someone I truly, dearly love, and you know they've taken control of that. They're eating, and it is awesome. It is awesome. And it's the results really do work. So I don't want to hear any naysayers. Oh, no, you can't do it. Yes, you can do it. Yes, you can do it. But you got to put yourself to it. It's out there. The excuses. I think that's really what I'm, what's frustrating me is there's so many excuses out there. There's the time for excuses. No, it doesn't work anymore. People see right through them. And if you're fooling anybody or thinking you're fooling people by using excuses, you're not fooling anybody. So do keep healthful energy boost snacks on hand. You know, uh, blueberries, awesome. Uh, almonds, they say like you eat like four almonds a day. It does all of this awesome stuff, but you have to eat it consistently uh, four times a day. You know, four, four a day and you just eat them. It gets into your system and it really does some good stuff. So I don't know. I'm going to check into that. Limit alcohol and caffeine. Okay, now this is where the big one is. This is where the big one is. Limit alcohol and caffeine. Uh, because alcohol and caffeine can trigger anxiety and it can trigger trigger panic attacks. So you've got to control that. You've got to control that. And yes, I've seen it. I've seen it where people that are just, they have anxiety, they have depression, and then they jump on board, get that big vente of cinnamon, doce, latte, vente, the huge big one. And uh, or what's it called? Tower Grande or whatever it is. The biggest one, they slam it back, they get that high from the caffeine, and then it's that fall that crash, and then that's where things get worse. They get exacerbated and they get worse. So no, I, stuff like that is nonsense. Get enough sleep, get enough sleep. That's the next one. Uh, when stress, your body needs additional sleep and rest. And people go, well, that's when the anxiety kicks in and I can't sleep at night. You know, what are you anxious about? I learned this, and this is my tip. I learned this is, I learned it the hard way because there were nights I was waking up in the middle of the night and it was like, there's no need. Um, I go to bed, and if there's something weighing heavy on me, I said, you know, there's nothing I can do tonight. Everybody else is asleep. The whole world is asleep. There's nothing I can do about it until the sun rises. I put my feet on the ground, then I'll deal with it then. But in the meantime, why am I stressing myself out over something I have absolutely no control over? And I do that. And, I mean, some nights I just, I don't even make it to my head hitting the pillow. I'm out. So try that. Give it a shot. But, again, get enough sleep. Rest. Exercise daily to feel good and maintain your health. Folks, there are so many things you can do. It's unbelievable. Uh, jog, walk, bike, dance three to five times a week for 30 minutes. Set small goals and aim for daily consistencies rather than the perfect workout. It is better to walk every day for 15 to 20 minutes and to wait until the weekend for a three-hour fitness marathon. Yeah, the three-hour fitness marathon is not going to do anything good for you. Lots of scientific data suggests that frequency is more important. Then, uh, so it's in this case, it's quantity versus quality. Something to think about. Extroverted people often like classes and group activities. People who are more introverted prefer the solo pursuits. Distract yourself with an iPod or other portable music player to download audiobooks and podcasts or music. Many people find it's more fun to exercise while listening to something they enjoy. Recruit an exercise buddy. It is often easier to stick to your exercise routine when you have to stay committed to a friend, a partner, or a colleague. And of course, be patient when you start a new program. And uh, um, most sedentary people require about four to eight weeks to feel coordinated and sufficiently in shape so that exercise feels easier. And folks, it's true. It really does get motivated, stay motivated, 
And uh, don't forget the old adage, <clears throat> 21 days of consistent, constant commitment equals a habit. 21 days, three weeks. That's how habits are formed. However, it takes 90 days to create a lifestyle. So doing something for 21 days, you've got a habit. You create a habit. But uh, 90 days, it's a lifestyle where it's part of who you are. It's like this show. I think about this show. I'm eating lunch. I think about this show. I'm uh, on the bus, on the shuttle from one town to the next. I'm thinking about this show. So it's a lifestyle. Now, the show has become a lifestyle, and that's a good thing. Um, let's see what's next. Take deep breaths. Yes, inhale, exhale slowly in through the nose for seven for the count of seven and out through the mouth for the count of 10. That's really going to slow you down. So inhale for the count of seven and exhale for the count of 10. In for seven through the nose and out the mouth for 10. Trust me, it really forces you to slow down. Sometimes it might, you might want to pass out because you don't have enough air coming in. No, uh, but it controls breathing and that breath control, breathing control, that's where it's at. That's where the calming effect is. Uh, count to 10 slowly. Count to 10 slowly. Another one of those slow down things. Count it. And if, it not, if that's not working, guess what? Count to 20 slowly. And then count backwards slowly. So go all the way 1 through 10 and then 10, 9, I mean 20, 19, 18. Count backwards, but do it slowly. It will slow you down. Um, well, I talked about this earlier. And this is where the stress comes from. This is where the anxiety comes from. But you know what? Instead of aiming for perfection, which is impossible, it, I mean, it isn't possible at all, be proud of however close you get. So do your best. Just say, you know what? I did the best I could. There's nothing I can more I can do today. I will finish this tomorrow. It'll get done tomorrow. Um, you know, as long as you show your work, you're fine. Uh, let's see. Oh, here's the next one. Except you cannot control everything. You know, People like that. They want to be in control. They want to know they got control. They want to know that what they're doing is because of them and everybody that's doing everything is because of them. No, you don't have control over, over everything. You know, put your stress in perspective. It is really, it is really as, is it really as bad as you think? I mean, think about that. Is it really? No, you don't have any control. You have no control in some cases. I only have control over me, but I influence those closest to me, you know, and and then maybe I have some concern for people outside of my immediate sphere of influence. But other than that, no, I don't have I don't have a care in the world for the person that works down the hall from me. And it's not that I don't care; it's just that we don't have that kind of relationship. We know each other at work, eight to five. Boom, they're gone. I'm gone. That's it, and that's the way it is. So accept that you cannot control everything. Folks, here's a big one. Welcome humor. A good laugh goes a long way. Remember that. So laugh. Enjoy it. Have Watch some video, a funny video. Listen to a funny podcast. But you know what? Never, ever, ever do it at the expense of others. So don't deliver humor at the expense of others, especially those that are closest to you, those that are family, those that are friends, those that are co-workers at that close level, the person in the next office to me, never at the expense of others. And you as a leader, never at the expense of your followers. Because what does that do? Yeah, sure, you might feel good. You might get to laugh a little bit. But what does it really truly do? You're putting stress and anxiety on the other person where they start questioning the relationship, where they start to wonder, well, wait a minute, am I just a joke to this person? And that's all I'm good for is a punchline? And that's all I'm good for so they can travel three, 300 miles to talk bad about me? Is that all I'm good for? So again, welcome humor, but never at the expense of others. Get involved. This is a good one. Definitely a good one. I've seen this. I've seen this firsthand. Uh, get involved, volunteer, find a way to be active in your community, which creates a support network, and it gives you a break from everyday stress. So get involved. Find something that you, touches you in some way whether it's um, you know feeding the dogs at the local kennel or it's helping stack books at the local library or it's reading to a kid or helping a kid learn how to read or do his math, whatever works. But find something to get involved in. That definitely, something that's also going to take your mind off of work, take your mind off your anxieties, take your mind off your stresses, and you'll see that it starts happening. Next big one. 
Oops, there we go. Oh, we don't have it here. Okay, so a couple of other ones. Learn what tri learn what triggers your anxiety. It's only one more. It's at work, family, school, or something else you can identify that you can identify. Write a journal. Write in a journal when you feel stressed or anxious, and look for a pattern. Talk to someone. Tell friends or family you're feeling overwhelmed, and let them know how they can help you. You let them know how they can help you, because Dave doesn't read minds. Dave does not read minds. Neither does the person sitting next to you. Neither does the person in the other bedroom, if you're at home listening to this or watching this. Neither does somebody on the other end of this. They don't read your mind. So if you call them for something, tell them. Don't, don't play games. Don't beat around the bush. Don't him and haw. Just speak to people. Communication. That's really where it's at. You know, and obviously, if you need to, talk to a physician or a therapist for professional help, but there is help out there. There's tons of help out there. There's people just sitting there to waiting to help, but you have got to take the initiative. And as a leader, the initiative is, is first, foremost, the top priority. That's how you lead by example, by taking the initiative. So you're a leader, you take the initiative, equals lead by example. So L plus I equals LBE. Leader plus taking the initiative equals leading by example. And there you go. You got it. But folks, that stress, it'll eat you up. That stress, it will kill you. That stress, it will just rip you apart. It'll rip relationships apart. It'll strip people down to nothing. Why? Because it could have been prevented, but they opted not to. They spoke a good game, but they never delivered. They didn't walk their talk. So let's look at the aspects and insights in this. Well, first of all, the aspects and insight on leadership is recognize that you're not perfect. Your team's not perfect. Everyone's not perfect. Your stakeholders, your shareholders, your boss, your peers, your coworkers, everybody. No one is perfect. Everyone has a good day. Everyone has a bad day. The guy driving down the street who, who cut you off. Again, they're not perfect. And you see that very well. But then again, are you perfect? Employees recognize that, hey, your leadership is also fighting the fight you're fighting too. They've got bills to pay. They've got things that need to get done. They got to mow the yard just like you do. But are they leading by example? Are they giving you that time to go out and just decompress? Are they letting you do your job or are they micromanaging you? Are they pulling a BART on you? You know, that's the question. And if you've been watching the show for a while, you know what I'm talking about when I say BART. So, Again, are they leaving you alone? If they're micromanaging you, then you see where the anxiety and the stress is. And maybe that's just how they're cut. And maybe that's how they're always going to be. But talk to people. And get feedback. But again, not at the expense of others. Trainers, training, and all of that. Well, again, deliver. Take a deviation from the norm, which is what we did here today. And say, hey, look, here's what we got. As sectors across the board, all sectors, all stakeholders, all internal, external, all organizations, everyone, customers, everyone, we're not perfect. The sooner we realize that we have stress as part of our lives, the sooner we realize that we need to actively deal with it, the sooner we can become better people. And at the end of the day, isn't that what we want? Don't we just want to be better people? Because I know I definitely want to be better than I was yesterday. Trust me, yesterday I was terrible. Today, I feel pretty good about today. I was much better than I was yesterday. So get it out there and get it taken care of. Listen, I've drawn, wow, good, almost 19 minutes. Listen, everyone, have a great evening. Tomorrow's Friday. A lot of stuff's going to happen tomorrow, but a lot of good stuff. So get out there, stay positive, think positive, be positive, know that you're positive, and um, get things done. So anyway, listen, have a great evening. I'll talk to you then.